In this chapter, we're going to shift gears and see what Cubase has to offer for those of you interested in producing dance music. We'll demonstrate how to apply tempo detection to sync a project to a pre-recorded piece of music quickly, how to apply audio warp when changing tempo, and the use of MIDI effects to supplement your compositions, how to use the arranger track to simplify song construction, and how to use side chaining to create a variety of effects, how to use Vary Audio to convert audio to MIDI data, and how to use the score editor functions to create printed music. Historically, MIDI and other electronic tools could only be used with music that was created on a computer. It was impossible to synchronize a live performance to a sequencer without timecode or a click track. Cubase 7 has a solution. The tempo detection function allows Cubase to synchronize itself to pre-recorded audio by making subtle adjustments in the tempo track. This means that a recording without a click track or timecode can be synchronized with Cubase. Let's start with a few bars of material recorded with no tempo reference at all. You'll notice the audio and the metronome do not line up. We have to turn on the tempo track so that Cubase can adjust the metronome throughout the song. Select the audio track and open the Tempo Detection panel, and now click Analyze. Cubase will generate a rough tempo track to match the freeform audio. Let's listen to our audio and our click track and see how they line up now. Much better. You can see that there are a lot of tools here to smooth and refine your tempo track, as well as making adjustments for syncopation, time signature changes, and other rhythmic devices. You can also adjust your tempo track a little at a time using the iterative quantize command. You can also use tempo detection to warp a freeform performance to a fixed tempo project. To do this, complete the steps for tempo detection. Then open the audio menu and select Advanced. Now click on the Set Definition from Tempo option. Here you can choose to apply changes to just this project or to this audio clip globally. You also have the option to place all the tracks in a musical mode. And click OK. Now we can set our project back to a fixed tempo and the audio will be warped to match it. Let's take just a moment to review some vocabulary because there are three similar terms that can become confusing to a new user. Those terms are quantize, audio warp, and time warp. All three are ways to adjust the relationship between musical events and the song's rhythm. Let's think of the song's rhythm as a ruler, and the markings on it represent bars and beats. In other words, you would tap your foot in time with these markings. To get a good rhythmic feel, the notes in the music also have to line up with the markings. We can make that happen in three different ways. Quantizing, which started with MIDI, means moving the notes so they align with the grid. Quantizing can now be done with audio as well as MIDI. Audio warping means stretching the performance so that it aligns with the grid. And time warping means stretching the grid so that it aligns with the performance. The integration of quantizing and audio warping is so tight in Cubase that controls for each are provided right here in the quantize panel. Sometimes a combination of all three is required to achieve the desired result. But not only does Cubase allow you to process audio as if it were MIDI, Cubase also lets you process MIDI much like it was audio. We typically think of effects as being limited to audio processing, but Cubase has a large collection of MIDI effects as well. You access MIDI effects from the MIDI Inserts tab in the Track Inspector. Here you can see a comprehensive list. Some of these features work more as tools to help transpose or convert MIDI from one key to another. Others, like the RPage and RPage 5, are terrific at generating creative alternatives.
Simply activate them on your instrument track and begin to explore. One of the most widely used MIDI inserts is Beat Designer. Now we looked at Beat Designer briefly in Chapter 4, but let's dig in just a little deeper. Beat Designer is a straightforward, pattern-based step sequencer that works particularly well when composing drum parts. It requires a sound generator like the Groove Agent 1 plugin. Let's open up Groove Agent 1 and Beat Designer to get the two going again like in Chapter 4. Beat Designer gives you the ability to designate a name for each lane, designate its MIDI note assignment, adjust its swing, or even delete the lane entirely. And you can adjust the volume and flam by where you click on the square, or the global flam controls in the lower left hand corner. You can access a large library of presets by using the preset browser. You can establish how many steps you want to work with and at what resolution. You have a jump mode setting which determines how Beat Designer switches from one pattern to the next. You may want it to jump immediately, or you may want it to finish the pattern before changing to the next. At the bottom are banks and subbanks. Now they're laid out in a keyboard pattern so that you can use Beat Designer as part of a live performance and trigger the pattern changes from a keyboard. You can use the edit menu to move your patterns from Beat Designer to your MIDI track or instrument track if you'd rather work in a linear fashion. One note, after you've pasted your patterns into a track, you should turn off Beat Designer so that it does not run along with your MIDI part when you play back the project. But Beat Designer can do more than drums. If you insert it on a synth track, Beat Designer can be used as a sequencer for bass or synth parts, like this. Another powerful creative tool is the Arranger Track. The Arranger Track lets you work with sections of your project in a non-linear fashion. This way you don't have to copy and paste events in the project window. Let's create an Arranger Track from the Project menu, Add Track Submenu. And now we'll designate portions of our drums, bass, and synth lines as Arranger events. To do this, activate Snap, and use the pencil tool to draw out an appropriate section on the arranger track. Now let's give this section an appropriate name, and we'll repeat this process for several other portions of our project. Now we need to construct an arranger chain to build up our song. Open the editor on the arranger track. You can add arranger events to the arranger chain in several ways. You can double click on an event on the left side of the editor, right click and select an action, drag and drop events from the editor list, drag and drop events directly from the project window. There's an option to designate how many times a specific section should repeat. This avoids having to chain together multiple instances of a shorter material. The last step is to click on the Activate icon to make the Arranger track work. Depending on what style of music you're making, this may be just what you need. It's also a handy way to try out different sequences of verse and chorus during the initial songwriting phase. And of course, it works the same with MIDI tracks and audio tracks. Another production technique is known as side chaining. A sidechain is a type of connection between two audio devices, typically an audio source and a compressor. Sidechaining was born out of necessity in the early days of broadcasting, but it's become a popular element in modern dance music. The original purpose of sidechaining a compressor was to automatically turn down the music when the announcer was speaking, 
That particular trick is still used and is called ducking. But we can use the same concept to generate a pumping dance bass. For this example, we'll use the patterns we just created. To make this work, we'll need two things. First, we need a strong bass tone fed through a compressor. Second, we need a rhythmic source to trigger the compressor. Let's create a bass part. Now we'll insert a compressor and activate side chain mode. Activating sidechain will automatically create another routing option in our connections. We want to trigger the compressor with the kick drum so that our bass sound will pump in time with the kick. To do this, we'll use the duplicate tracks option on the drums. Then delete everything but the kick. We don't want to route this kick drum to the mix, we want to route it to the compressor, like this. Now, when we start playback, the compressor will only activate when the kick drum is playing. Let's start playback and create a simple bass tone. Nothing too dramatic so far. Now, let's adjust the compressor to a much more radical setting so that we really hear its effect. That's more like it. Remember that most compressors are designed so that you don't hear them. To get this effect, we have to undo all of that programming. So a few things to keep in mind. You'll probably want to turn off the automatic mode and avoid using soft knee, analysis, and hold settings. You'll want to use a high ratio with a very low attack and release value. The lower you set these values, the crisper the effect becomes. The threshold control will affect syncopation, and the makeup gain will work like a master volume control for the effect. This effect isn't to everyone's liking, but of course, it's popular in some genres, and Cubase can certainly deliver. Let's move back to our project and explore one of the more conservative features in Cubase, the score editor. Cubase is so well known as a DAW and a sequencer that many owners don't even realize that it's also one of the most powerful music scoring packages on the market. Let's look at one area where the functions of recording and scoring come together. Let's create a lead sheet for our first project, Gonna Getcha. Instead of starting with a blank slate and drawing notes by hand, We'll take a shortcut by converting Janelle's vocals to MIDI notes, which will create the score. To keep things clean, we'll use the duplicate track option to copy the lead vocal line. This way we can make edits required for the score without disturbing our original part. Now we'll activate Vary Audio and let Cubase analyze Janelle's vocals. From here, we'll select the Convert to MIDI option and place those MIDI notes in a new track. Now we select Open Score Editor and open the part. The new note expression system means that the score editor will capture Janelle's articulation and modulation as well as her notes. With a little bit of editing and a little bit of typing, you can generate a professional lead sheet in no time. Let's move on to chapter 10, where we'll look at live drums and how to prepare a final mix with maximizing and dither.